Welcome to the first episode of the Kindle UI screencast series on building single page applications with the Kindle UI MVVM framework and SPA components. Single page applications aren't anything new, although the term itself may be fairly new. The basic idea is that instead of building a website that loads complete pages from a server every time the user interacts with the page, we only load the full page once. From there, the page uses JavaScript to manage content and interactions with the user. If this all sounds familiar, well it should. This is what we used to call interactive web pages, and it's why control suites like Kenda UI exist. The idea of a single page app moves far beyond just interactive web pages. A lot of pages can be called interactive and display these very basic characteristics, but a single page application tends to take this further. A highly interactive site will have a number of complete browser refreshes from the server. Each page is interactive, but moving to a new context or a new feature requires a full server round trip. A single page app tends to eschew this in favor of dynamically replacing content in the already rendered screen using JavaScript. That is, entire sections of the site will be taken down and replaced without reloading everything from the server. Kendo UI has a rich history of providing highly interactive controls that make websites and apps easier to build and more friendly to work with. And personally, I've been using Kendo UI's controls to build single page apps for a while now. But I was doing this on top of other single page app frameworks and just using the Kendo UI controls as needed. With the first quarter release in 2013, though, Kendo UI added a few components to better facilitate single page applications without having to use a third party framework. These new components include a view, a layout, and a router. And throughout the screencast series, I'll walk you through an in depth look at each of these, along with some other related pieces. I'll show some of the basics of integration with the MVVM framework, the widgets and control suite some code organization and scalability issues, and modularization with required JS. All of this will be done in the context of building a single page application, specifically a kitty gallery for posting and viewing my favorite lolcats, kitty pics, and other memes. It's a simple application overall, but it provides just enough features and just enough complexity to illustrate a lot of the principles of building single page applications. So without too much further ado, let's dive into the core project setup and start memeing our way to greatness. I'm going to be building the backend server for this application with Node.js and Express.js. Now don't worry if you're not familiar with these though, they're simple to set up and you won't need to do anything other than download the server code and run a few commands to get started. If you already have Node.js installed and are comfortable with it, you can skip past this section of the screencast. Just be sure to install the npm packages and run the app.js file for the server. If you're not familiar with Node.js though, I'll walk you through setting it up pretty quickly. Now normally I'm using a Mac to code and record screencasts, but I'm going to do this part of the screencast on a Windows machine as I expect most of the viewers to be using Windows. The good news is that the steps are basically the same on Windows, Mac, or Linux. So if you're on one of those operating systems, you should be able to follow along easily. To get started then, head over to nodejs.org and download the latest version. As of recording this, that's version 0.10.5. Once you have the installer downloaded, run it and follow the instructions on the screen. It shouldn't take more than a minute or two to get things installed. Next, you're going to need a copy of the server source code, and I've made this available on this GitHub project page. You can either clone the repository if you're already familiar with Git, or just click this link to download a zip file of the repository. If you've downloaded the zip file, go ahead and unzip it into a project directory somewhere. Now there's one more step that you need to do in order to get the project set up and running. Open a command prompt or terminal window depending on your operating system, and go to the folder with the code that you cloned or unzipped. From here, run the command npm install. This tells the node package manager to install all of the dependencies for the project. Note that this is just a one-time setup. Once you have this done, you shouldn't need to do it again. After everything is finished installing, you can run the web server with another simple command, node app.js. This tells your Node.js installation to run the application and the configured web server, Express.js. Open a browser and go to localhost colon 3000, and you should see a basic layout for the project. 
I've already set up the core structure and CSS that you need for the project, so we can focus entirely on the MVVM and SPA code for the project. Hopefully you have everything set up and running and are seeing a web page similar to mine at this point. With that being done, let's dig into the first bits of code for this Kitty Gallery single page application. What does an image gallery do if not display images? To get the app rolling then, I'm going to set up a kendo.view object that will display a kitty on the screen. Now Kendo UI has long provided the ability to render HTML templates, bind a view model to the HTML, create controls and widgets through data attributes, and more. With the introduction of kendo.view though, the orchestration of these pieces has been consolidated into an easy-to-use API that provides a better semantic understanding of the functionality it encapsulates. To get a view up and running, you need two things, an HTML template to render and an instance of the kendo.view object. Open the imageviewer.js file from the public slash js folder in the project and create an instance of the kendo.view on the first line. And for the HTML template to render, pass a string containing an image tag with its source set to a placekitten.com image. With that done, you can render the view instance by calling the render method with no parameters. This returns the rendered HTML, and then you can use jQuery to insert the content anywhere you want. The imageviewer.js file is already included in the page source, so you can save the file now, and when you refresh your browser, you should see the kitty from placekitten.com. Now this isn't the most interesting of view objects, even if it does give us the desired result. Having hard-coded HTML doesn't do much good in a data-driven application, so let's replace this with something that can be a little more dynamic. I'm going to create a kendo.observable object to use as the model for the view, a view model. This image object has a URL attribute that will control the image displayed in the view, and you can set it to the same image for now. Next, update the view template by adding a data bind attribute and tell it to use the URL attribute from the image model as the source of the image tag. Now assign the observable as the model for this view instance, and with that, you can save the page and refresh the screen to see the same result. Only in this case, the image is produced from the combination of the view model and view, not just the hard-coded template. Instant single-page application capabilities, right? Well, maybe not yet. This is a good first step, but it isn't anything really new if you're already familiar with the MVVM pattern and Kendo UI's observable objects. The real difference is how the view wraps up a lot of the plumbing code that you previously had to write yourself. The page is still lacking in some features though. It's nice to have an image, but it really needs an image list if it's going to be an image gallery. Before moving on to the list view configuration though, there's a problem with the template that needs to be fixed. The template is currently hard-coded into the JavaScript, and that is definitely not what you want to do for a long-term application development process. Templates are things that will be turned into HTML, but should not be displayed on the page before they are properly rendered. There are a number of tricks that can be used to hide templates, including the use of CSS, but it's considered best practice at this point to use a script tag with a specific type attribute set. When your browser runs into a script tag, it usually tries to interpret it as JavaScript. That wouldn't be good in this case, as the tag won't contain any valid JavaScript. But if you set a type attribute on the script tag and change it to something that the browser doesn't recognize as an executable type, the browser will ignore the tag. It won't try to run the contents of the tag, but the contents will still be available to be used from JavaScript and jQuery selectors. To get rolling, open the templates.html file in the views folder. Once again, this file is already included in the page output, so you don't need to worry about setting that up. Add a script tag to the file and set the type attribute to text slash x dash kendo ui dash template. 
This will prevent the browser from trying to run it as JavaScript. Now the actual type doesn't really matter that much at this point, but it's a good practice to set types based on the content. Once you have that in place, the script tag can be populated with the template that we previously had in JavaScript. You also need to set an ID on the script tag so that it can be found by the JavaScript code easily. Set the ID to kite-view-template and then head back to the JavaScript. Update the view instance to pass in the ID kite-view-template as the first parameter. Note that you don't need to use the hash mark in order to say that this is an ID though. The Kendo UI view object will recognize this as a template ID and pull a template from the DOM automatically. Refreshing the page shows the same kitty image that we've been seeing, but with the template in the DOM now, we can focus on the configuration of the template and setting all of the needed data attributes without having to worry about JavaScript string problems. Configuring widgets and controls for views may be familiar if you've worked with the MVVM framework in the past. Using various data attributes on DOM elements allows the Kendo UI suite to initialize the controls and widgets as needed. Doing this, instead of manually calling the control initialization in the view models, allows the Kendo.view to be in control of when the widgets are initialized. With this in mind, we're going to set up a list view to show a list of images now. Set up a new template with an ID of kit a list template, and add a div with a data role attribute of list view. This tells the Kendo UI suite to initialize the list view control when the view is rendered, and it's this list that will show the list of images. Alongside this template, add another to display each individual image. Call this one kit a list item template, and have it show an image with a fixed width of 150 pixels. This will force the image to display smaller than the original, making it easier to see the list of images. It's a simple trick to use without resizing the images, though in a production environment you really would want to resize the images for this list. Back in the list template, add a data template attribute to the list view and set it to kite-list-item template. This tells the list view how to display each of the images in the list. Now add a data bind attribute to the list view and assign a source attribute to image data source. This tells the list view how to read the data from the view model that the view is bound to. Over in the JavaScript then, add a data source that has a list of kitty images by creating an attribute on the observable object called image data source. That's the name of the source that you told the list view to use. Go ahead and hard code the list of images for now, assigning them directly to the data source's data attribute. And with that in place, create a Kendo.view instance, assign the observable to the view's model, render the view, and populate the image list element with the results. Image list, by the way, is a div that is already set up in the page's HTML, sitting above the main image view inside of the orange bar. Now when you refresh the screen, you should see a list of kitties above the main image view. And seeing this list is great, but clicking on them doesn't do anything yet, and that really needs to be fixed. There are more ways to click an image and show it in the view than can be listed, but the Kendo UI list view makes it easy to pick. It gives you a selectable attribute and a change event that can be used to select an image and know which one was selected. In the template for the list view, add a data selectable attribute and set it to single. This allows a single item from the list to be selected. Now go back to the data bind attribute and add an events hash with the change colon image clicked setting. This sets up the event handler for the item selection in the list view. Back on the JavaScript, set up the image clicked method on the observable object for this view. This method receives a single argument for the event details, which provides access to the item that was selected. 
Once you have the item that was selected, update the observable object with the new image info. Since the same observable is being used for both the image list and the image view, you can just call this.set and update the current URL. Head back to the browser and refresh. Now when you click an image in the list, you should see it displayed in the main viewing area. And thus, the Kitta Gallery is born. There's a lot more to building a well-structured single-page application than this, but this is a good start. You went from a single-page structure with nothing really useful to displaying a kitty and then a list of kitties to click on and view in record time. In the next episode, though, the gallery will go even further. A kendo.layout will be used to get the page layout in place, and a router will be introduced so that images can be bookmarked and the page can be refreshed in order to show the image that you want to see. So stay tuned, there's a lot more awesome to be found in Kendo UI's MVVM framework and SPA components.